kit and the pendulum. It was about this man, and he was in this army back in the 1700s, and he'd been captured. And they took him to this place where they tortured people. And the way it started off, he, he woke up and he was in this room and everything was dark. And he wanted to find out where he was, so he started going around the walls and he put a piece of paper and a crack in the wall so he could see how so he could see how far it was around the room. And he started around the room and he found out how far it was, and so he wanted to see how far it was across it. So he started walking out across it, and the room he was in, the walls were made out of metal, and the floor was too, and it had this old moss and stuff growing on it. And he started out toward the middle of it, and he slipped, and he fell flat on his face. And he could feel his nose touching the floor, but he couldn't feel his forehead and his hair touching the floor. It felt like his hair was hanging over the edge. So he uh, picked up a, a chunk of his moss and threw it out in front of him, and he just heard it keep going down and down and it hit this water. And so he decided there was a big hole there, and he still didn't know really how big the room was, so he figured there were, you know, several of the holes in the room. And he would get on the side of the room, and he wouldn't move, he'd just sit there. And every time he would go to sleep, he'd wake up, and there'd be a piece of bread and some water sitting beside him. One time he drank the water and ate the bread, and he felt like he was getting drowsy, and he knew he'd been drugged. And when he woke up, the room, the lights were on in the room, and he was strapped down to the table with some kind of bandages. He could see all these paintings and things all over the wall of these, you know, creatures from other planets or something. And he looked up, and way up above him, the ceiling was about 100 feet high, and he could see this pendulum swinging. And it was just making about an inch of an arc, and it was coming down real slow. And he knew what was happening, and it was real sharp. <clears throat> So days went by before the thing got anywhere close to him, and there were all these little rats around in the place, and I always kept getting up on him, and if he went to sleep, he was afraid they'd eat him up. So he would scare them off. And finally, he decided if he was gonna get away, he was gonna try to get the rats to try to chew the bandages into. So he was real still, and he was like he was asleep. And the rats crawled up on him and started chewing the bandages, and the pendulum thing swung, and it cut part of the bandages across his chest and he jumped up and got out of the way and about a few minutes after he got away from this the room he could see the sides of the room start to get hot and the floor started getting real hot and everything was turning red because it was turned, made out of metal and all of a sudden the wall started closing in on him and they were getting closer and closer and they were moving real fast and they were pushing him toward the pit in the middle of the room and Wait, is it okay if I stop right there? It's written. Um, I was choosing one to start out of this. It's called Jimmy Takes Vanishing Lessons. And it's written by Walter R. Brooks. And I start off like the little boys got some got on the school bus and and the bus driver was talking about his grandmother's house and they said it was haunted, so his that little boy didn't believe that his grandmother's house was really haunted, so he was going to go down there and find out. So after school that day, he went down there and he finally got up enough courage to go in and he opened the door. And he went in and he saw this white figure gliding down the steps, you know. So it came down there and it scared his devil out of him. So he ran back outside. And then he, all of a sudden, he, you know, he didn't really want to be scared of that ghost. So he came back in there. The ghost was going back up the steps and he was laughing and everything. So, so um, the little boy's name was Jimmy. He said, said to his, uh, well, I'm not going to let that ghost do that to me. So he comes up behind him and he scares the ghost. And the ghost is real scared, you know? So, and the ghost turned around and said, don't do that to me anymore. And <laughs> he says, um, now don't you go out and tell anybody that all ghosts are scared of people instead of most ghosts scaring people. <clears throat> well, so anyway, um, so the next day the boy came back and he was going to ask him all these questions why he was haunting that house. So he asked him, well, what's the main reason you stay here? He's called, well, it's warm and, and all us ghosts need some place to stay, you know. So so the guy said, well, the ghost said, well, I'll make a deal with you. If you won't tell anybody that I was scared of you, I'll 
teach you how to vanish. So the guy made a deal with you, you know. So that night the little boy went home and told him, told his grandmother he was gonna learn how to vanish. So a couple of weeks later, she came in and he came to his grandmother and started talking to her. She couldn't find him, you know. And she said, "Where are you?" You know, he appeared right there. And <coughs> He said, well, I really need you now. He said, how are you going to do that? He said, the ghost taught me down there at, at your house. And she said, I don't believe that, you know. So he vanished and he came back and said, yeah, I guess I do. So, so the next day they went down there and they needed the money real bad. So they were going to rent that house out to some people. And everybody in town knew it was haunted. So they wouldn't, you know, nobody want to live in it because they were afraid. So the one went around town asking all kinds of people to come rent, come live in that house, you know. So, so nobody would do it. So then they brought Jimmy up and they told him that he had been spending the night there the last week and that he wasn't afraid of ghosts or anything. So they finally got these people to come in as long as, as, long as those people stay with them. That's the way we all begin a Brady Bunch. And then a couple of weeks later they couldn't find that ghost that had been there and, and one day this little boy went down to the went down this big farm down the road and in this old barn he saw that ghost so he asked him how he was doing and everything and the ghost said he was doing fine and he found a new home and everything so about this guy named Billy Kemper, and, and he was a big high school uh, athlete. And, but he played, he played, he was really good at baseball. He was pitching and not home runs. Basketball, he was the best one on the court. And when he came around to football, he wouldn't play. Nobody could understand why he could, he wouldn't play football because he was real good at the other sports. So this senior year, they were gonna try to get. All the football team was going to try to get him to go out from the end on the football team. And they nagged him for about a half a year. And later on, they just got on his nerves, so he, he went on out for the team. And everybody just knew he was going to be real great. So they they're playing a scrimmage game with, uh, with Westside. And it, this is a, just a, another team had to play for practice. And, and they put Billy in, in and he went out for a pass and they threw it to him and he was wide open and this guy came up behind him and he heard him. So he got scared and dropped the ball. And they, he, he, he'd been doing that all during practice and he was real great and short, but when they got in the pass, he was real scared and everything. So they couldn't understand it and the coach couldn't understand it. So came the first game, they, they weren't gonna play him because he was scared to play. So. Billy, he got real depressed and he got ready to quit. And finally, his basketball coach came up to him and asked him why why he was so scared of football or something. He said, "Well, when he was in a Pee Wee's, something like that, he he was playing and it, he poked his guy's eye eye out uh, with his finger or something. He didn't like to play too much and and he hurt his leg real bad. So he was for he didn't like it too much, but then the coach talked to him for a long time and got him to like him sport, and, and after that his whole football career changed. That's all and go. The name of my book is uh, Some Things Dark and Dangerous. And, um, I picked one story out of the collection of 16. The name of the story is The Fantastic Horror of the Cat in the Bag. It was written by Dorothy L. Sayers. It's a fiction story. It begins um, by telling about these two motorcyclists that are riding down a uh, road. It's, I think it's in England about dialogue is used riding down a road. And the author doesn't name the characters by name. It um, She just tells, uh, names them by what they were riding like. One was riding a Norton bike and one was riding a Flying Squirrel, a Dutch bike. <coughs> anyway, the uh, Flying Squirrel was uh, chasing the Norton bike. They were doing about 80 miles an hour and uh, beeping his horn trying to make the man on there stop, but he didn't pay any attention to the one on the flying squirrel and just kept on going. They uh, finally reached a uh, small town where a uh, constable or a police, policeman, whichever you want to call him, 
uh, stopped him for speeding. And he pulled him over and gave him a ticket. And the uh, man on Flying Squirrel explained to him that he was just trying to stop the man on Norton to give him a bag that had dropped off his carrier a couple of miles back. The man on the Norton uh, denied this. He said he'd never seen the bag before. The name of my book is Representative Narrator. Uh, I picked out one of the stories and I picked uh, The Fall of the House of Usher. It was written by Edgar Allan Poe about this man who was lived in the house of Usher and he was sick and he wanted this other man to come and see him because he was some kind of a doctor who could cure him and so he went there and he was came and this other man tried to keep him away and he had another boy with him was, uh, It's by Carol King. And I'm going to play the part of Nancy Drew. Well, my name is Nancy Drew, and my father and I, we solved mysteries. And so one day he was sitting in the living room, and I walked in, and he had this letter and a key, and I asked him if I could help him with anything. And he said that I could, Mr. Baker, that he would have to find somebody else to look after this cottage, because Mr. Baker had hired Henry Winch to take care of it until this Sicily... Anyway, so she got there and she came.